Marvel Studios Loki has introduced us to all kinds of wild characters, which is why I'm speaking with VFX supervisor Brad Parker. Hey, Brad. Hey there. Now, there are a ton of incredible characters that you and your team got to work on for the series, but I want to talk about one of my favorites, Miss Minutes. How would you describe her on the show? Sure. So Miss Minutes is this digital mascot who appears to kind of provide story exposition, to talk to characters, to give them information that they might not normally have, who kind of pops up anytime she's sort of needed or wanted or not wanted, as, as it can turn out to be from time to time. She was a really interesting creation in that uh, she wanted to look almost hand animated. She has almost a retro style, but she's fully three dimensional, like a uh, contemporary hologram. The visual artists that we worked with on this created a series of tests of what this clock person could look like dimensionalized into 3D. And then we also did a series of tests of what her overall look or patina might be. You know, she's got these sort of scan lines that travel through her body. She's semi-transparent. All of those little elements and decisions were things that were painstakingly tested and tested again until we arrived at sort of a recipe for what it is that Miss Minutes looks like. So once you have that recipe, how do you take the scene filmed with real actors and add a digital character? When you're working with, a, uh, with real actors who are interacting with characters that aren't there, you generally want to make sure that the real actors know where to look and where the other character is going to be. In that case, we provide what's called eye lines. That could be as simple as a tennis ball on a stick that the actors look at. In the case of Miss Minutes, this was often a uh, little LED lamp that would create a little bit of a kick of light that she emanates from herself onto the walls, the actors were able to look at that lamp and know that's where Miss Minutes would be at any given moment. Well, speaking of blending the real and the fantastic, let's talk about the timekeepers who are also very important to the TVA. Could you talk us through that scene where we first get to see the timekeepers in action? Sure. So the timekeepers were particularly interesting in that they're all digital. They're meant to be these sort of lizard-like anthropomorphic creatures that control the flow of time and protect the sacred timeline. Now they're entirely digitally created. They're hand animated and they're based on a vocal performance by a single actor, which is pretty impressive. We soon discover that they actually are in fact robots or androids and not living, breathing things. So it was an interesting challenge to kind of create performances that felt like robots pretending to be lizard creatures that were ultimately kind of found out. All right, that is layers on layers on layers. But once you have all of that, how do you take them from being more humanoid and making them more robotic? In order to create the timekeepers, digital sculptors will create a version of a digital maquette or, you know, small sculpture in the computer. We take it to the next step, which is adding texture, you know, making sure the cloth looks real, that the material flows nicely and has the proper amount of shine and that their skin looks the way that it needs to and, and their eyes. And all of those things are developed by talented visual artists in the computer. We then animate their performance. This was a case where we didn't do performance capture. Animators hand animate all the movements of the timekeepers. Ultimately, everything is rendered into the scene and compositors piece it all together and create one seamless effect. Well, it's all been such a sight to behold. Now, looking back at the entire series, what does it mean to you as an artist to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? It means a lot as a, as a digital artist to kind of contribute to the Marvel Universe and introduce new characters like Miss Minutes and the Timekeepers. And, you know, to be able to kind of identify what they look like and how they behave and basically who they are is really exciting because you know that that work is going to live on in the future. Thank you so much, Brad. And of course, everyone go experience Marvel Studios Loki only on Disney+.